Hello and welcome to this bite-sized webinar series from the Compliance People about environmental aspects registers. Just to introduce myself briefly, my name is Hannah Williams and I am part of the consultancy team here at the Compliance People. I'm going to be talking to you all about environmental aspects registers, sometimes known as an aspects and impacts register. In this webinar, I'll be covering what an aspects register is, why you might need an aspects register in an organisation, what an aspect is and what an impact is to help your understanding. I'll then show you what a good quality aspects register looks like by using the aspects register tool provided on our legislation update service. Throughout the webinar, I'll also be making links to how we've developed the aspects tool on the legislation update service to meet all the requirements of the Environmental Management System Standard ISO 14001. So let's start by covering what an aspects register actually is. An aspects register is a document, a tool or a system that's used to identify all the ways an organisation interacts with the environment. Once we've identified all of our aspects, they are then scored using set criteria in order to determine significance. Those aspects that are causing the most environmental impact end up with the highest scores and therefore become our significant aspects. These significant aspects then need to be addressed within our environmental management system, such as through having an associated environmental objective with them. Why would organisations have an aspects register? Well, for those of you listening that are certified or are looking to become certified to 14001, you should be well aware that it is a specific document requirement of this standard to have an aspects register. So you aren't going to become certified to the standard or keep your certification if you don't have an aspects register. In addition, having an aspects register gives an organisation a good understanding of all their impacts on the environment. And it allows an organisation to focus their efforts on priority areas where they're currently affecting the environment the most. So here you can see part of the aspects clause within ISO 14001. And it should be said that if you do have an aspects register, it shouldn't sit in a file on a shelf, never to be looked at again. It should help drive environmental improvements along with other parts of your environmental management system and be a useful working document that staff are aware of and is regularly reviewed. Easier said than done, eh? So I'm sure you're wondering what actually is an aspect. The standard defines an aspect as an element of an organisation's activities, products or services that interacts or can interact with the environment. So an example of an aspect could be the electricity used to power equipment, or another example is the wastewater produced during a manufacturing process. These are ways that an organisation is interacting with the environment. We're using energy in the form of electricity, or we're creating wastewater and releasing that down to the sewage system. It's useful to think about the categories that aspects can be split up into and the standards suggest the following categories. Emissions to air, so aspects under this category could be things like greenhouse gas emissions from a stack. Releases to water, so an example aspect under here could be things like domestic sewerage or trade effluent. Releases to land, an example under this category would be having a spill of oil. Use of raw materials. So use of metal or wood as examples under this category. Use of energy with electricity use and gas use being aspects that I'd expect to see under that category. Energy emitted, so things such as heat or steam being emitted from a process. Generation of waste as a category. So we'd list out all our different waste streams as different aspects such as general waste, mixed recycling, hazardous waste, etc and community issues as a category. So aspects under this category could be things like noise or light pollution. So as well as identifying our environmental aspects, we also need to identify the associated environmental impacts of our aspects. The standard defines impacts as a change to the environment, whether adverse or beneficial, resulting from an organisation's environmental aspects. So this means an impact is the effect or the result on the environment from an environmental aspect. Examples of environmental impacts include things like air pollution, global warming, land pollution, 
and deforestation. The impacts caused will depend on which aspect is being considered. So, for example, the aspect of using electricity that's generated from fossil fuels contributes to global warming, which is the impact. The aspect of having an oil leak from a tank could cause land pollution and soil erosion, which are the impacts. For the next section of the webinar, in order to show you everything a good quality aspects register should contain, I'm going to log into our legislation update service system and go through an example aspects register within this system. Legislation update service can be accessed by going to the compliancepeople.co.uk. For any of you listening that aren't current subscribers to the system, we have free trials available should you wish to take a look in more detail. So here we are within an example aspects register on the legislation update service. So the first point to make about a good quality aspects register is that it contains all the aspects that are relevant to the organisation within the scope of its EMS. So for this, we need to consider all the day to day activities that the business carries out. Thinking about the categories that the aspects register is split up into, this aspects register has aspects identified under every category. How many aspects you have will be based on what you do as a business and how big your site is. But to give you an idea of numbers, having hundreds of aspects is far too many, but just having a handful isn't really enough. This aspects register is thought about all the different areas of the business, such as different departments and other areas of the site. It's thought about any planned or new developments, such as building work or new processes and everything that we do day to day is captured in our aspects. As well as aspects through day to day activities, this register has also identified any aspects relevant in abnormal and emergency scenarios. So we can see some examples here in the register, such as spills, leaks from vehicles, or having a fire from different sources. And this is because the standard requires us to take into account abnormal conditions of reasonably foreseeable emergency situations, with reasonably foreseeable being key. There's no point writing down aspects from emergency situations that are never going to happen. For example, putting the aspect of having a flood if you are 100 miles away from the nearest river. We also need to think about any positive aspects that the organisation might have. Now, not all organisations have any positive aspects at all, which is absolutely fine. But if you do, they should be captured within the aspects register. So the example we have here is the fact that this company has carried out tree planting, which is a positive aspect, as it has a purely positive impact on the environment. There's no negative impact associated with planting trees. So it goes in as a positive aspect with the score of zero. Other types of positive aspects could be creating a wildlife garden, or even providing environmental education to the local community. We also need to think about identifying aspects from a life cycle perspective. This does not require a detailed life cycle assessment. What the standard wants you to do is to think carefully about each life cycle stage that can be controlled and influenced by the organisation. And you need to identify any aspects that apply at each life cycle stage. So you can see here in the register, we have the life cycle stage applied to every single aspect. So this is a function that the tool allows you to do. Life cycle thinking is not an area that I can fully go into in a short webinar that's designed to just give you an overview of a good aspects register. But do look out for our formal aspects training courses that go over all the concepts in detail. So as well as aspects that we can control directly, we need to think about any aspects that we can influence. So these can be related to products and services that are used by the organisation that are actually provided by other companies, including outsource processes. Does your organisation outsource any processes to anybody else? A good example of this can be transport. That's quite a common process that's outsourced and is done by a third party. So this aspects register is captured that the products they make are transported. It might not be done by them directly but they can influence the aspect of all the emissions from the transport of their products. Now it's up to you to determine the aspects that you can influence and to the extent that you choose to implement this influence. But if it's relevant, it certainly needs to be captured within your aspects register. So now I've covered the general identification of aspects and where they can all come from. You can see there's lots of supplementary information for each aspect that's documented in the register. 
So now I'm going to go into an example aspect and show you what else we should have in place for each one. Clicking into the aspect of electricity, you can see here that we have the associated environmental impacts that apply to the use of electricity. So we've determined that the use of electricity is causing the environmental impact of global warming and climate change. The tool has a number of impacts that you can pick from in the term in tick boxes, or you can write your own impacts if these aren't any applicable to you. The next feature of a good quality aspects register is that every aspect has a life cycle stage that's applicable assigned to it. The aspect of electricity has got the life cycle stage of production service delivery assigned to it. And that's because we use electricity when making our products or delivering our service. This is the third life cycle stage. So we need to make sure every aspect has got the relevant life cycle stage assigned to it. We also need to make sure that any relevant legislation is linked to our aspects where applicable. Not every aspect is going to have environmental legislation that applies to it. But as this is the aspect of electricity use, we have some relevant environmental legislation that's around the use of electricity, such as the Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme Regulations 2014 assigned to the aspect. So the criteria used by the tool means that every aspect is scored against six different things. And those things are quantity, environmental impact, compliance obligation, interested parties' needs and expectations, current control measures, and improvement potential. It's important to note that the criteria in the tool has been developed through our consultants' years of experience and also using information given in the standard. The standard doesn't tell us how to score aspects, just that the method used should provide consistent results. So if you use the tool on LUST for your aspects register, it will certainly be compliant with the standard, but if you use something similar within a different type of aspects register, it's also fine as long as the method is consistent. You'll also see some italic text under every score that's been selected. The tool allows you to type in some information against every score that prompts you to remember why you selected that score in the first place. For example, the score of three, which is the highest score, has been selected for quantity and that's because the organisation used 50,000 kilowatts of electricity in 2017. So they're putting a justification or a marker against the reasoning for that score. This can be really helpful when you look back at the aspects register and try to remember why you pick certain scores. It can be useful for the purposes of an audit if somebody else needs to pick up the aspects register and understand why it's been given a certain score. So filling in the justification boxes or doing something similar within your own aspects register is something that's really useful. Once all aspects have been given a score, we then need to determine within the aspects register which of our aspects are going to be classed as significant, which are basically our highest scoring aspect. So we can see here within this aspects register, the significance threshold has been set at 108. So any aspect that's got a score of over 108 will show a significant. So this aspect here is significant. This one also is. And there's a few more in some other categories as well. In terms of numbers of significant aspects that an organisation should have, again, that would be based on what you do as a business and bespoke to an organisation. But as guidance, you usually need around sort of three to five significant aspects. It's not really enough to have just one significant aspect, but also having 20 or 30 is far too many. You also need to think about the fact that your significant aspects have to be communicated to relevant people. So this might be internally or externally. It's just who you deem relevant. A good quality aspects register is also reviewed at set frequencies. So you can see here that the review date for this aspects register has been set for the end of June next year. The requirement to review your aspects register, although it's not specifically stated in a particular clause, it's certainly best practice to make sure it's reviewed periodically. And this is because significant aspects within an organisation should regularly change as actions become implemented to achieve objectives, which then in turn mean that significant aspects become reduced and then others in the kind of middle of the register get pushed back up to become significant aspects. And in addition, change within an organisation should certainly prompt a review of the register, such as buying in a new raw material or implementing a new process. 
that concludes our whistle stop tour of an environmental aspects register. So let's summarise all the important points I've made while showing you the example register to hopefully allow you to make sure your aspects register has all of these qualities. The relevant clause from ISO 14001 will show on the slide to hopefully help you further. So a good quality aspects register contains all the aspects relevant to the organisation, including aspects from day-to-day -day activities, including positive aspects, if you have any that are relevant. All day-to-day -day activities have been thought about, all areas of the site, all departments, and every aspect that is applicable is documented within the register. We also have aspects documented related to the different life cycle stages that can be controlled or influenced. And we have aspects associated with abnormal or emergency scenarios. For every aspect we have within the register, we also have the associated environmental impacts identified. We have associated environmental legislation identified for each aspect where applicable. Note this actually sits in clause 6.1.3 which is the Compliance Obligations Clause. Another feature of a good quality aspects register is that every aspect has been scored for significance using set criteria. And each aspect has been scored using the same criteria to ensure consistency. And we've also used a good range of scores within the register. Our highest scoring aspects become our significant aspects. So they have been identified and they're being addressed by the EMS. It's clear in the register what our significant aspects are, and these are regularly reviewed. Our significant aspects have been communicated as the organisation sees appropriate. And finally, everyone's favourite task is that the aspects register is reviewed periodically, and certainly when there is any change within the organisation. There we have it, the perfect environmental aspects register. Thank you very much for listening to this webinar, and I really hope you found it useful and that you can use the information to ensure your aspects register is in the best shape possible. The compliance people are the UK's leading provider of health, safety and environmental compliance management services. We've got loads more resources and guidance available on our website, thecompliancepeople.co.uk. So go and take a look. Thanks again for listening.